Okay, great. So we proceed. So hello everyone, and welcome to this webinar. That I will be hosting, uh, and uh, we, that will be about uh, an introduction to trap key interlocking. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Mr. Lilia Mombana. I work for the Centric Safety Group, which is a company that manufactures, supply, and sell uh, trap key interlocks. So it's actually a good thing that I'm the one presenting and hosting this type of uh, of topic. Yeah. So. What we are going to uh, to cover, sorry. Yes, so the table of contents. I'm going to start with a brief history of uh, trap key interlocks where it, it's uh, all started. Uh, I'm going to present to you what they are, um, how it works. I'm going to show you uh, um, an application, an example to present to you as well uh, where the fields where it apply it applies, sorry. And finally, I'm going to present an alternative method, which is um, lockout tagout. Okay. So I would like to start with that uh, 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 statement. So according to HSE experts and safety organizations, human errors represent around 80 to 90% of workplace accidents which is quite a lot. So it means that at least four accidents out of five could be prevented, right? And when we know the dramatic consequences that some of these accidents uh, can have, it is really crucial to uh, find ways and means in order to prevent that to happen. Luckily for us, uh, some brilliant guys mainly from the past century and the past century um, uh, before uh, thought of it. And um, the French engineer, um, Paul, Mr. Paul Bourret, originally created in 1893, the concept of trap key interlocks. After that, he founded a company uh, that uh, represents one of the company uh, that belongs in the same trick safety uh, group. And few decades later, Mr. James Harry Castell that we are, we are seeing here, also um, introduced that concept uh, in the frame of the electrification of London. And few years after that, uh, as well, we saw Mr. Kirk in the US uh, coming up with the um, implementation of of uh, trap keys interlocks in the frame of city breakers and switches. So those are the main figures, people that we know that came up with that brilliant uh, uh, idea of finding, uh, of um, inventing key uh, interlocks and putting it in work in order to prevent all these accidents. So that's being noted, uh, that being said, sorry, uh, we can now uh, focus on what the what is a trap key interlock. So according to uh, the standards, so the standards that you see, that you see here, the ISO 19837, the one version from 2018, which is actually the standard that is ruling the principle and the designing of a uh, trap key interlock um, uh, system. So. An interlock is a device, or the definition is here, or a part of a trap key interlocking system, which fulfills a function by either trapping or releasing a key in a given system. So on the, on the top, we have um, an image that is summarizing uh, what I just said, so that we understand it better. So we have uh, three elements. We have a switch, so let's imagine that we have like um, a, 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 a main switch disconnector. So we have the actuator here, that is the switch represented. We have a bolt lock, the item number two, and we have a key that on that first uh, step is trapped into the bolt lock. So we imagine that the machine is on and the supply is connected. 
So what we are going to do, we are going to turn the machine off by operating the switch, which will going to allow us to be able to trap and lock the switch and then release the key. So that is how we operate um, uh, um, we operate a switch with an interlock. So this is the definition of an interlock and an interlock works in a trap key interlocking sequence, which is here. So a trap key interlocking sequence still uh, uh, according to the, the standard is a system that is fulfilling a safety function or part of a safety function and compromising of at least two trap key interlocking devices, which work together through a transfer of key. So that's just to say that we have uh, three defined steps that you can see represented here that represents a system, right? We first want to isolate the power then we want to perform a key exchange. So let's imagine that the key was first trapped here. We isolated the power, which allowed us to release the key, to insert it into the key transfer units. That is then therefore allowing us to withdraw that secondary key that is here in order to insert it into the access the access log or the access control step, which is the third part. So by performing and by going through all that sequence, this is what we we, we performed uh, or we designed or we went through an interlocking uh, solution, trap key interlocking solution, trap key interlocking sequence, basically. In order to for you to have a better understanding of everything that I'm I'm saying, I just want to present to you uh, an application, an example of how it works when uh, put in place uh, in, a, in a specific set. So let's imagine that we have a main switch. We are in a, in a workplace, in an industrial workplace, for example, with some different machines that are working. And we have our main switch that is here. So we are going to, to um, fix and install a main switch, uh, a, a lock, sorry, uh, that is going to um, mechanically block the main switch actuator. We are going to then be able to release the key by extracting the bolts. We are going to transfer that key onto a transfer unit. We are going to trap that key and be able to release two keys that are going to uh, be used on access locks. So here we have two examples. We have one access lock for, uh, so here we have a belt uh, or a, a pulley and we have an inspection panel. So we are going to come and fix the lock on the inspection uh, panel so that if the main switch is not um, isolated, we cannot open that inspection panel. And then of course, prevents to be uh, harmed by the belt inside. And another example, let's imagine that on this one, we have uh, a bunch of machines. It could be robots, it could be, uh, conveyors, it could be um, all different type of tips, uh, mixers, but we have, we have like a whole room, a whole room that is secured by some fixed guards with a door. So on this case, we are going to use what we call a full body access. So it means that we are going to basically do, go through the same steps. It's just that we are going to have a packet key that we are going to use when entering the hazardous area. And that will prevent uh, 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 anyone to come and switch back the uh, um, and turn the actuator again so that we supply the energy um, again. So that will allow us as we perform and as we are in the hazardous, hazardous area to be safe because you have the, the key that is, let's say, um, uh, uh, blocking the sequence to go uh, back on the um, original uh, uh, points, okay? 
So that being said, and as we set the frame for how the trap keys interlocks work uh, um, and, and what is what it what it's made of, we can talk about um, where it applies. We understand that the scope is actually very large and that it can be applied to uh, different sectors. We have chosen to divide it into three categories. So the first one is the industry uh, category. So it's everything related to um, aggregates, for example, and mining, as long as the concrete sector, it could be food production, it could be also everything related to metals, uh, paper, waste recycling. It's basically uh, in all these industries, industries, you know, where we are going to uh, have uh, machines, machinery like uh, conveyors, uh, belts, mixers, hoists, pulleys, and everything. So um, that's where it's going to apply. Okay. The second uh, segment is going to be the energy segment. So what uh, we, we refer to when we talk about the energy segment is everything related to the generation of power. So I'm talking about plants. It could be a nuclear plants. It could be um, it could be a, a hydraulic plants. It could be also a renew, renewable plants such as um, solar panels plants or um, wind turbines. So it could be everything related to that from the power generation. And then we're also going to cover when we uh, transfer the power that is generated, generated to the grid. So we are going to use transformers usually, usually to do that. So we are going to use interlocks in that frame in order to make sure that whenever you are, we are performing uh, a switching that we're doing in a, in a safe manner. And finally, it's also going to be the distribution of that energy that we first generated and, and, and that uh, and transferred into the grid to the different supplies such as uh, hospitals, facilities uh, like malls, uh, uh, airports, all this kind of stuff, basically. So this is for the second segment. The last segment is going to be the transport segment. So this is mainly uh, going to be used to prevent unscheduled drives away that um, um, makes a lot of accidents. And it's also going to be used for a railway sector and specifically for depot um, equipment, such as the, the image that you see here on the, on the bottom right corner. Yeah. So I would like to introduce to you an alternative method to uh, track keys interlock, which is lockout tagout. I wanted to talk about that because it is the most uh, spread concept uh, that is used when it comes to uh, performing safety procedures in industrial workplaces. It is the most spread uh, uh, concept because it is simpler to use and to understand. And um, it is something that, uh, it's a concept that relies um, mainly on items such as padlocks and tags. So yes, a uh, uh, local procedure is a safety procedure that is used to ensure that dangerous equipment is properly shut off and it's not able to be started again. So it's actually the same thing as uh, TKIs. And also something that is very important to understand with that, uh, uh, that, that method, that concept is that on this one, you own your own safety or you are responsible of your own safety as opposed to uh, when it comes to TKIs where uh, um, the, the equipments that are used are um, placed and fixed usually on the machines. So this is a different uh, approach that I'm, um, I'm presenting to you here. And why I want to talk about that because also uh, lockout tagout is a good and simpler way to ensure safety uh, in workplace, uh, workplace environments. It has some limits 
it has some limits that can totally be uh, addressed by Trotsky's interlocks, right? So I just wanted to go through some of them so that you understand the difference and you understand how um, industrial workplaces that are using Lotto could be enhanced with uh, TKIs. Okay, so the first step is that with uh, Lotto procedures, um, keys can easily be duplicated uh, and are not always unique. And this is inducing a big uh, risk when it comes to um, um, the operation and uh, going through these procedures because we have to understand that when there is um, an identical key that is used and introduced in a follow an, in an existing procedure, it can of course cause shortcuts and then cause a risk to that procedure. Okay, and how TK is addressing that is that key codes are always unique and are always tracked and managed by the company that issued them because they are the usually they are the main ones that can reproduce the key, the key code. Okay. The second aspect of the things is that uh, it can be really problematic to manage a bunch of keys, especially because they are supposed to be. I mean, when we have used the padlock, they are supposed to be uh, kept on on um, they are kept on the person that is. Um, going to the, the, the lot of procedure and uh, they can therefore easily be, easily be lost, right? And how TK is addressing that is that keys are normally always trapped or almost always trapped in the sense that keys are always transferred from a lock to another. So it means that we have the keys in our hands on two occasions, only when we are transfer, transferring it, sorry, from a key to another, or when we are using it as a pocket key, as like the example that we, we saw uh, earlier. The third thing, um, the third bullet point is the fact that um, failure could, I mean, when not uh, strictly followed, uh, a lot of procedure could easily be a shortcut. Why? Because of what we said before, it relies on the fact that of the goodwill of the persons that are going to uh, uh, undergo the lotto procedure. It means that if for any reason, they are not really willing to follow the rules of what the, the procedure is saying, they can still do otherwise. While when we use a, a transfer, uh, um, a, a TKI solution, the, the, the procedure is kind of uh, imposed by uh, the, the equipment themselves. It's very, very complicated to do otherwise because if you don't follow the procedure of first isolating the switch and then you, you won't be able to release the key, you won't be able to move to the next step, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay? The, 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 the fourth step is the fact that the risk, uh, is about the risk of mistakenly re-energizing re, re the machine. It is a bit related to the step that uh, I, I, I just covered because of the fact that the different parts of you isolating a machine and you performing as I mean as an operator, you performing uh, um, a op uh, maintenance operation, for example, those are not necessarily linked. You could basically one person could uh, isolate the power and another one could perform uh, the maintenance operation because the two aspects are not necessarily linked. Once again, I, and I really want to, um, to pinpoint that, I, I, I know that when uh, a lotto procedure is 
respect is, um, I mean, is um, well followed. I would say it like that. This will not, or this is not supposed to happen. But in the truth, in the in the reality, it's not necessarily always happened that way. And so, and that's why, that's what is going to induce human error. And on another aspect, the human error is going to be really mitigated uh, with the trap kids interlocks, right? And the last part also that I want to talk about that is not necessarily uh, uh, covered by Lotto is the management of residual energy. So let's say, for example, uh, that we have uh, a fan we are operating or we want to perform an operation on a fan. So if we use only Loto equipment and Loto items and um, that we want to access to such an equipment, we normally need to wait uh, uh, the fan to reach uh, the velocity uh, zero before accessing to it. And once again, because there is not necessarily a link between um, the part where we isolate the, the power and the part where we access to the hazardous area or the hazardous equipment, it means that we could directly go to the next step without performing, without making, without having all the conditions that would make sure that we are in a safe place to perform or to access to the fund. So how are the TKIs going to how the TKIs are going to, uh, to cover that? We can easily take into account what we are going to call uh, a time delay or anything related to uh, a condition with solenoid control locks, for example. Yeah. So these are just few examples on which uh, TKIs can offer, let's say, a better uh, uh, safety level than than Lotto, but that is not to say that Lotto doesn't work or doesn't work well. If applied well, we shouldn't have uh, uh, we shouldn't encounter a problem as well. And even by saying that, there is also a way to have both of them working together because when or if we combine these two principles or these two technologies, we can even uh, uh, um, have a higher safety level covered for our industrial uh, workplaces. So how can we perform that? A written lookout tagout procedure is also used to document, document the steps to isolate the hazardous energy source, right? Um, trap key interlocks in that frame can aid in isolating the energy source and the lock and tag can be applied on the interlock. Because indeed the partnership between the, the trap key interlock and the lockout uh, tag out, it's going to hugely uh, mitigate human error. And here on the right hand side, side sorry, is an equipment, it's uh, an access lock that allows you to do to use both trap keys interlock. I mean, it is a trap key interlock, but on which we um, we associated um, this unit that is a, a tool that we are going to come and use in order to insert our padlocks in so that we know and we keep a good track of the operators that are performing uh, uh, um, operations. Yeah, in a hazardous, uh, um, area. Okay. That being said, uh, it's actually the um, the end of this short webinar that I wanted uh, to uh, to, uh, to cover with you. Um, you are now free to, if you need uh, to ask some questions, if something was not clear, or if it's, if it's something that you would like to um, to have some um, insights on, and I'll be free to, and I'll be happy, sorry, to uh, respond to, to 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 them. So I'm just going to
unmute. Is there any question? I don't see if uh, you've raised your hand or anything so far. Was that was that uh, clear enough for you? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, I have one. Yes, Navin. I think that at this point you can unmute. Uh, I can also do that and uh, and uh, and uh, ask your question. And you, uh, uh, Navin, can you talk? Normally, you can you can unmute and talk. I can see Roshan as well. No questions, boss. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Sorry. So I have a question from Mahipa Singh Rator. Uh, he's asking to confirm whether the key interlock is suitable for is suitable for some repeated brand breaker extended handle. So uh, yes, um, just to give you an idea, the main um, circuit breakers and the main OEMs from the energy sector that sector that we're going to work with are some big brands like Siemens, ABB, Schneider, um, Eaton, General Electric. Uh, Lawson and Talbro. So yes, all the names that you 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 listed, and we are so we have specific items that has been designed in order to work directly that can be embedded in the circuit breakers that these uh, big big uh, companies are going to um, to supply. But also there is always or at least almost always an alternative solution that consists of um finding a way to fix it so that it still performs the the the, the job that we want to, that we want it to perform so yes we can definitely adapt to the big brands that uh, we uh, we listed but not only okay i hope that i've been able to respond to your your question mahipa uh, I have another question coming from uh, Lars uh, that says, okay, okay, you, you are actually providing also an answer to, uh, to, um, to Mahipa, I think. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I have another question from Rajiv, Rajiv, sorry that is asking if we have uh, local distributors in the Middle East. So the response is yes, we have plenty of distributors actually in the Middle East. They are we are present in the uh, UAE, we are present in Saudi Arabia, and we even have some, uh, some of our local distributors that are uh, uh, present in that call. We are also present in uh, Qatar with uh, some local presence, yeah. So maybe uh, Rajesh, if you want, if you have some specific uh, requests, you can. Uh, yes, I can share with you the details of the of the distributors. Okay, so I will, I'm just going to um, note it down, and uh, we will uh, connect after the call. And the same goes for Mahipa as well. Yeah, I saw the I saw the question. Okay, good. Uh, do we have other questions? No. 
if um, everything is fine for you. So normally this session, you are going to be able to find it on uh, uh, YouTube, at least on the official pages of our company of Centric uh, uh, Safety Group. Uh, also, I want to let you know that, so this is the first time that we are kind of organizing this type of um, event. And if there is a specific topic that you would like to be covered in uh, the future, uh, uh, please uh, feel free to drop uh, a comment, feel free to, to send me uh, a message so that we'll see how we can, um, we can make that happen. So that yes, uh, we, we, we adapt and we, we, uh, we respond to the, um, the questions that are really um, important and means uh, that are really meaningful for you, yeah? So do not hesitate to, to, to let me know and um, we will try to make that happen and organize that. Okay. So thank you very much uh, for everyone to have been able to attend to this session. Um, I hope that you were able to grab something uh, with you, that you learned something uh, today. And uh, hopefully we will uh, see you, uh, we we'll see uh, each other in uh, another meeting, another session of that type. Okay. So thank you everyone and uh, goodbye.